Breaking news. Um, sources familiar, two sources familiar, tell NBC News that Chief Justice Roberts is not expected to preside over the trial. At this time, it's going to be Pat Leahy, who's the Senate pro tempore. Um, what do you make of that? How do you feel about that? I, I uh, It's news to me that you say that. So uh, we'll, we're just planning to try our case. Of course, the 100 senators are also uh, the jurors and they're also the witnesses. So I, I, uh, I'll have to talk to my co-impeachment managers about the, the presiding. I imagine uh, Senator Leahy's the most senior member of the Senate, so that's why they decided that. Does it open the door, though, to GOP arguments that this trial is not fair if there's a Democrat presiding over it? Well, I'm, I'm sure the GOP will try to make any arguments that they want. I mean, already they're saying we shouldn't have a trial, even though the precedent is clear that you can have an impeachment trial after somebody leaves office. And um, so I'm sure we'll hear all kinds of arguments, but I know that the trial will be fair. And also don't forget, Katie, the evidence is so clear in this case. We have everything pretty much on TV. We have the president telling all his supporters to come to Washington on January 6th. He has them inviting him to the White House and then telling them to come up to the Capitol and to stop the counting of the certification of the state results. So it's a it's a, as a former defense lawyer, I, criminal defense lawyer, I will say it's a pretty uh, open and shut case. Well, we're not hearing about this being a witch hunt. We are hearing a lot of procedural arguments from the Republicans, including uh, the House Judiciary, which just tweeted if Chief Justice does not Roberts does not preside over this trial. The American people will know this is not a serious impeachment. Um, let's move on to the reporting that we all read out of the, the New York Times over the weekend uh, that Donald Trump plotted with the Justice Department, a specific lawyer, uh, to try and overturn, I'm sorry, to try to oust the acting attorney general and use the power of the DOJ to force the overturning of election results. Again, reporting out of the New York Times, Times, it didn't happen because the Justice Department's top leadership threatened to resign. I know you've said you won't talk about evidence that you're going to use in this trial, but, but this seems like something that might come up. Well, this is pretty outrageous. The Justice Department is supposed to be the independent uh, judicial representative of the American people, not the president's personal attorneys trying to overturn a legitimate election. Um, and, and what it is, it, it just shows it's part of a whole pattern and practice of Donald Trump trying to delegitimize the election from day one. I mean, he tried to influence state election officials. Uh, he and his team filed numerous lawsuits, all of which were thrown out. And then, of course, culminating in the instigation of the mob to come to the Capitol and actually stop the count. So, so this is all part and partial of his intent to do whatever he could, including corrupting the Justice Department to try to stop the legitimate certification of the election. Allow me just to add that the DOJ Office of Inspector General, the OIG, is initiating an investigation into whether any former or current DOJ officials engaged in an improper attempt to have DOJ seek to alter the course of the 2020 election. Um, there's more time given to the, the between period between this impeachment and the Senate trial than I think many had expected. It's not beginning until the beginning of February, uh, first week of February or second week of February. Um, does that help or hurt the case against Donald Trump? Well, Katie, the case was already so strong. As I said, it was all on TV and on social media. But the longer that time goes on, more and more evidence comes out, evidence of the intent, both Donald Trump's intent, but also his supporters who came to the White House and who violently stormed the, or came from the White House to the House and violently stormed the House to try to stop the counting. They're all now coming out and saying, we did this because Donald Trump told us to. So I think, who knows, in the next two weeks, more evidence may in fact come out. We were ready to try this case uh, the day after the House passed the article of impeachment, the evidence is so strong and, and so apparent, but more evidence comes out every day.
Given that there's going to be more or there potentially could be more evidence, I don't know what might be coming. And but we did hear from The New York Times over the weekend with something new. Should the article have been written more broadly? Right now it says incitement to violence. Um, did it need a second article? Did it need to be written more broadly in order to, to get this new ev evidence um, under its banner? Well, I've got to say that incitement to violence in and of itself is probably the most serious charge you could make against a president of the United States, because what we're saying is Donald Trump incited the mob to come to the Capitol and stop the certification of a legitimate U.S. election. I really can't think of a more serious charge. So I'm happy to go over to the Senate with my other managers and to present this case. It's a strong case. Congresswoman Diana DeGette, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate thank it. You. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.